Welcome back to the first law of thermodynamics and physical chemistry. My name is Kevin Tokoff. Make sure to like the video, subscribe to the channel for future videos. In the last two videos, we looked at how to deal with calculating work, heat, internal energy, and enthalpy for isothermal and isochoric processes. In this video, we're going to do the same thing, but we're going to do it instead for what's called an isobaric process. Okay, isobaric implies that there's no change in pressure, meaning we're, we have a constant pressure. Okay, now we're changing volumes and we're also changing temperatures here, but it's isobaric. Okay, and that's actually going to simplify one of the calculations we're going to do. All right, so probably the place I'd like to start out is finding the work done. Okay, so we have our definition of work here. Our definition is work, or PV work, is equal to the negative integral of PdV from V1 to V2. Now, the pressure is constant. We're not changing pressure at all. So that means this term right here, this pressure, is a constant, meaning I can pull it outside of the integral. And then I get the work is equal to the negative P external times the integral of dV from V1 to V2. Now here, you're just integrating a differential element. So when you do that, you just get delta V. And recall that delta V is V2 minus V1. Okay, so that means a work done is actually pretty simple. It's just equal to negative P external times delta V. All right, so you should theoretically know V2 and V1. And then to find the work, you just apply this formula right there. Okay, it's as simple as that. Now, one thing I'm going to do is I'm actually going to skip doing heat and internal energy for a minute because I want to show you something. And that's basically how to find delta H. Delta H you're going to go about finding a little bit differently than you did um, in the other uh, two previous videos, all right, for isothermal and isochoric processes. Now, remember I talked about a thing in the last video um, called total differentials or total derivatives. Now, this is the total derivative for delta U that you saw in the previous video. Here we have the partial of u with respect to v at constant t dv from v1 to v2 plus the partial of u with respect to t at constant v dt from t1 to t2. All right. Now, keep in mind here um, that pressure is what's constant. So that means that we have a changing volume. Volume is not constant. And we have a changing temperature. Temperature is not constant. If you remember back to the previous video, when we looked at the partial of u with respect to t, at constant V, this was equal to CV, right? It was equal to CV, okay? So that means we're at constant volume, but in this problem, we're not. We're at constant pressure. So that's one reason this um, total differential to use internal energy to do this is not valid. What we're instead going to do is use the total differential, differential for enthalpy, not internal energy. And it turns out that it's similar in nature, but you have to remember that enthalpy is instead a function of pressure and temperature, not volume and temperature. So when I do this, I get delta H is equal to the partial of H with respect to P at constant T dP from P1 to P2, plus the partial of H with respect to T at constant P dT from T1 to T2. Now, another sort of identity that you would sort of need to recognize is that the partial of H with respect to T at constant P is equal to CP, the heat capacity at constant pressure. So I'll take the heat capacity at constant pressure and just substitute it in for that. Okay. The other thing that's nice about using this is pressure is not changing. It's constant. So DP right here is zero. So that means this whole term is zero. That means all I'm with, left with here is delta H is partial of H with respect to T at constant P dT from T1 to T2, but I just said that this entity right there is CP. So that means the delta H is going to be the number of moles times CP dT from T1 to T2. Okay, now this whole thing right here, you can also recognize that as something else. That is the heat at constant pressure. Okay, so it turns out that when you're dealing with particularly an ideal gas and you're doing an isobaric process, it turns out that the heat at constant pressure is also equal to the enthalpy change. So all you need to do to find the enthalpy or the heat is just take the number of moles times CP dT from T1 to T2. Okay, and that's how you calculate the heat and the internal energy. Now, the other thing that you can do, the other thing is you need to find internal energy. All right. Well, now we have enthalpy, right? So how do we find internal energy? 
Well, there's really, at this point, two ways to find it, right? For dealing with an ideal gas, remember that um, delta U is equal to Q plus W, and delta H is equal to delta U plus NR delta T, right? So I know delta H, right? So if I wanted to find delta U, I could just do delta H minus NR delta T because the temperatures are known, and that will give me delta U. But I would say the easier thing to do is just take the work that you found in the first step right here, put that right there, and then add on the heat that you got in the previous calculation right there. Just add them, and that's delta U, okay? So that's easy enough. But if you wanted to, you could take delta H minus NR delta T, and that would give you the internal energy also. A lot of times in physical chemistry and physics in general, um, there's more than one way to go about finding something, okay? There's more than one way. We also could have said, okay, well, this is the heat, and then just added on NR delta T, and that would have given us delta H, but remember that delta H is just equal to Q, okay? These two things right there are equal. All right. So hopefully that gave you a little bit of sense of how to deal with an isobaric process. Okay. In the next video, we're actually going to go over some more complicated examples um, where we're dealing with an isotherm graph of PV. Okay. So um, join us in the next video. Uh, make sure to like this video, subscribe to the channel for future videos. Thank you. Have a good day.